Molly Cop Ropes has a long and proud history of rope making in Australia, with more than 85 years experience as a trusted manufacturer and supplier to industry. We are part of the REM group of companies that was previously one steel until July 2012. As an integrated manufacturer, we control every stage of the rope making process, from mining iron ore, to steel making, to rod and wire manufacturing, to wire rope manufacture, and finally, recycling of scrap metals. From cradle to grave, Molly Cop Rope's involvement with wire rope is complete. Rope is manufactured for applications across all industries, including mining, manufacturing, engineering, construction, transport, and commercial fishing. Wherever needed, the quality and construction of Molly Cop Rope's wire rope will meet the conditions of hoisting, heavy loading, wear, and impact required in a wide variety of working conditions. The expertise and experience of the men and women at Molly Cop Ropes guarantees it. But Molly Cop Ropes does much more than just manufacture of wire rope. They also follow up with world-class rope inspection, testing, technical support, training and efficient field support services. With NATA accreditation and a well-equipped testing laboratory, Molly Cop Ropes delivers approved testing on all of its products, as well as rope products manufactured by others. Our dedicated technical services team works to continually push the boundaries of product design, manufacturing process and product packaging to meet our customer requirements. In a joint initiative with mining, Molly Cop Ropes has developed a unique philosophy known as TRM, Total Rope Management, a continually developing program. The aim of TRM is to help improve rope performance while increasing machine uptime and developing customised mine site rope strategies. It begins with analysis, information systems, rope life predictability, product development, training and recycling. A team of field service managers are embedded in a mine's day-to-day -day operations and dedicated to the management and maintenance of mining rope. One of their duties is to conduct audits to ensure new equipment complies with manufacturer specifications. Included in Molly Cop Rope's mining rope product range are Tough 6, Tough 8, Redback and Raptec for dragline hoist, drag and dump ropes. Redback plastic infused ropes for shovels, Raptec feral dump ropes for drag lines, and a range of spiral strand pendants for drag lines, shovels, and stacker reclaimers. Wire rope. What is wire rope? And how is it made? In this section, we will examine rope and discuss how it is manufactured. Wires are considered the basic building blocks of a wire rope. They lay around a centre in a specified pattern in one or more layers to form a strand. The strands are then closed together over a core to form a rope. The properties of wire rope are derived from its lay and lay length, the diameter, construction and the type of core. The core's function is to support the outer strands and contributes to only 7 to 10 percent of a rope's minimum breaking force. The lay of a rope refers to the direction the wires and strands are laid to form the completed rope. There are two types of rope lay in rope making, ordinary lay and Lang's lay. In ordinary lay, if the wires in each strand travel in one direction, say from right to left, then the strands will be laid in the rope in the opposite direction, that is, from left to right. In Lang's lay, the wires in the strands are laid in the same direction as the strands are laid within the rope. Heavy mining ropes are produced in a Lang's lay configuration because it provides superior properties in wear resistance, abrasion fatigue and scrubbing. The distance a strand travels before it reappears in the same place on the rope is referred to as the lay length. The easiest way to find the lay length of a six-strand rope is to place your finger on the crown of one strand 
and then count six crowns along the length of the rope. For an eight strand rope, place your finger and count eight crowns. Now that we're familiar with the properties and construction of wire rope, let's follow the manufacturing process and see how a rope is put together. The process begins with the manufacture of strands. Wire is loaded into a variety of stranding machines that vary in size and complexity, depending on the rope required. The number of wires in a strand may vary from three wires and have as many as 55 wires. For example, this stranding machine is producing one of the strands that will eventually form a six-strand mining rope. The final stage of the manufacture of a rope involves the closing machine. The closing machine twists the necessary number of strands together over a core to form what we know as a wire rope. This particular closing machine is capable of producing rope from 16 millimeters to 200 millimeters. Here, it is closing strands over a wire rope core to form a rope 120 millimeters in diameter. This heavy diameter rope is used primarily in the mining industry. The strands pass through a preform head that shapes them to their final helical form prior to being formed into a rope in the die. The advantage to preforming is that it improves a rope's resistance to bending, fatigue, and loading stresses. A double capstan maintains tension in the line as the completed rope is pulled through the machine and wound onto a drum in the take-up stand. Other specialist processes may be carried out before rope is completed into a finished product. One such process is plastication, where molten plastic is applied at high pressure in order to force the material into the rope. Plastic impregnated wire rope provides for a longer service life and cleaner operations. This plastic cushions the strands while distributing internal stresses. Therefore, ensuring lubricants are intact while keeping out dirt and other foreign debris. Plasticated rope is used primarily on mine shovels. The external coating reduces wear on sheaves and drums, improving uptime for operations. A lot of care has gone into ensuring that our customers get the best use out of a quality Mollycop Ropes product. However, all that can be wasted if a rope is damaged through poor handling, storage or even improper installation on site. The best storage arrangement is under a roof away from acid fumes or any other corrosive atmosphere. If reels are to be stored outside, they should be placed so that they are clear of the ground in a well-drained area, on hard packed ground or ideally on a concrete stand. Mollycop Ropes applies protective wrapping to reels of wire ropes in the factory prior to being distributed. This protective wrapping is usually suitable for short-term storage only. It is recommended that if a reel is going to be standing in the open elements for a significant period, it is best to cover with the tarpaulin and tie down. When lifting wire rope reels, care should be taken to avoid damaging the rope or distorting the reel in a way that may cause it to collapse. The preferred and safe methods of lifting are, for steel reels, use a spreader beam with slings attached to the lifting lugs on the reel sides. For wooden reels, use the purposely designed lifting pintles inserted in the barrel of the reel. Or a lifting beam with slings placed around a spindle inserted through the center of the reel. Smaller reels, less than five ton, can be lifted using a fork truck. The fork truck can be used to either lift with a sling or place the tines under the barrel taking care not to damage the rope with the tines. Never use slings in a way that they pull inwards on the flanges. Each reel has lifting guidelines attached to the flange. Ropes can often be damaged during installation or during change out. For example, end for ending on a drag line. Installation of heavy rope should be done using a reel stand with braking to prevent overrun and possible damage due to kinking. Do not allow steel track vehicles, for example dozers, to drive over ropes. This practice destroys the strand lays and compromises rope life. When pulling ropes over the ground, 
it is best to use wire rope slings or nylon straps slung at two points to prevent nicking the strands or bending the rope. If chains must be used, sling at two points and take two turns around the rope. It is inevitable that all wire ropes will wear out. That's why rope inspection is vital in preventing a catastrophic failure. As well as helping to determine the safe operating limits of the rope, regular visual inspections and reports allow maintenance personnel to decide when to schedule the rope for maintenance. Regardless of the difficulty or inconvenience, never overlook an inspection. Here are a few things you should look for when doing a visual inspection of wire rope. Take this drag line for example. First thing is to be alert to any changes. Look up to make sure hoist ropes are running through all sheaves as they should. Next, inspect each hoist and drag rope at the point where they enter the socket. This area is prone to severe bend movements and forces that act on the rope. This is a good place to look for any broken wires. Each broken wire reduces the rated strength of a wire rope. In a drag rope, if three or more wires are broken at the socket, then the rope may need to be re-socketed. For a hoist rope, if there are six or more broken wires, you must report it. Report the condition immediately and get advice from your crew leader or maintenance personnel. Also, note if there's been any increase in the number of broken wires from previous inspections. This could be a sign of a deteriorating condition and should also be reported immediately. Continue your inspection along the length of the rope, from the socket up to the fair leads. Broken wires and rope wear generally occur along this length. Pay particular attention for any broken outer wires. Signs of severe abrasion or scrubbing could indicate there's a mechanical or operational problem. Wire rope continually pulled through the roll or against the pit edge will develop martensite, which is a brittle constituent of steel. Martensite inevitably causes wire breaks and ultimately rope failure. The ropes saw through dirt and rocks and begin to burn. This can be easily identified by the rope producing sparks during operations. Martensite is an irreversible condition which leads to quick deterioration of the rope. The general rule for allowable broken outer wires in a drag rope is 30 to 35 broken wires in one rope lay or no more than 12 broken wires in one strand. If you detect 30 or more broken wires then report the condition immediately and get advice from your crew leader or maintenance personnel. Look for physical damage, crushing, or where the rope structure might be damaged. Run your eye along the length of the rope for any severe reduction of rope diameter or an increase in rope lay. Take notice if there is evidence of any corrosion, particularly in the vicinity of attachments. Also, check if there is a lack of lubrication. Any concern with lubrication should be reported immediately. Other easily recognizable signs of damage in a rope are bird caging and kinking. Bird caging can be caused by a sudden release of tension and the resulting rebound of rope. These strands and wires will not be returned to their original position and the rope may have to be replaced. A kinked rope is caused by pulling down on a loop in a slack line during handling, installation or operations. A kinked rope may have to be replaced. Check for signs of lubrication problems. Grease is placed in the rope during the manufacturing to ensure movement of the individual wires. The amount of grease applied should be sufficient for the life of the rope. Lubrication applied in service is there to protect the outer wires from steel-on-steel -steel contact with sheaves. Sprays should spray onto the sheave to give it a coating, not directly onto the rope itself. Excessive lubrication will pick up dirt and carry it into contact points, causing abrasion wear to sheave groove profiles. Remember, whether it's through diligent inspection and reporting or competent machine operation, 
It is the operator who exerts the most influence on whether a rope achieves its designed life.